happen. As people know, like most of this, the decisions that we make on the show are musically based, and we kind of work from the music backwards. So, I mean, I, ultimately, Luke Cage is a bulletproof version of Lemonade. Yo, I'm Luke Cage. You want to test me? You know where to find me. Now, in season one, um, Luke Cage was almost a myth. Now he's out in the public and everybody knows who he is. He's much more of a he's much more of a target this season. Well, the thing is, is he actually has an app. You can find Luke Cage. Um, we have this thing called the he Harlem's Hero app, um, which is, as DW says, it's ways for you. So <laughs> the thing is, we, we thought about what it would be like um, when you have a hero that um, everybody knows where to find him in terms of in terms of Pop's Barbershop. He doesn't wear a mask. And, you know, what is that like? What is that like in real time in 2018? So what that means is that if you're a Luke Cage and you're walking down the street, people would take photos of you because, as you know, in this, you know, information age, you could geo-track those photos. People would kind of always know where Luke is. And so part of what we deal with in the first couple of episodes is what is it like to live, you know, um, under the bubble? Um, what is it like to be a superhero in the age of celebrity? I mean, yeah, so he's gone from like relative obscurity to everybody knows. Wait, does the app really exist? Can I get this app? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how much uh, comics, like I'm a big comic book fan, so yeah. I know what I think you referenced in season two, but what comics did you use as reference in season two of Luke Cage? Well, it wasn't, it's never really like specific comics. I mean, we have um, in our writer's room, like we have a, a, a number of the first run of, you know, Hero for Hire, because it was Hero for Hire before Heroes for Hire. Um, so sometimes we'll, we'll be inspired by like, okay, you know, how do we incorporate Mr. Fish, uh, you know, which of course, um, we referenced the character um, by his um, given name in episode three. Um, but a lot, some of it's just like, you know, how do we remix characters from the um, Luke Cage coterie of, of villains in a way that makes them different? So our version of Black Mariah is different than, than the comic book version. Our version of, of Cottonmouth, rest in peace, is different. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, it's like this year we introduced um, Cockroach, we introduced uh, um, Piranha Jones, um, but they're, they're, they're nods to the comics, yes, but, you know, we make them fit our television, you know, our Marvel television universe differently. So we do it in a way that people that know nothing about the comics get a hint of what they were like, but then we kind of go in different directions, and that's really what's so great about um, this show is that you kind of get to have your cake and eat it, too. Like, you know, of course, we're, we're all blurs and geeks, but at the same time, the realities of television are that it's a different medium. So you really want to try to do it in such a way where you can kind of be true to both if you can. One of those departures you made was with Bushmaster. Yeah. Um, and Mustafa Shakir is amazing. He did an incredible job. Um, and thank you so much for going with John and not with his brother, Quincy, with the tail. Because <laughs> I, nobody needs to see that. <laughs> but um, that choice, Mustafa, um, when he auditioned, like, did you know immediately that he was going to be your Bushmaster? You know what was interesting? Um, we saw a lot of good Bushmasters that day. But then when Mustafa walked in and then he just delivered, it was like, okay, what, this guy. Like, I don't know who just left, but this has to be the person that 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 has got to get this part. And from day one, working with Mustafa has been, like, absolutely amazing. Um, he just has a, a confidence and a charisma about him. Um, and the fact is, is that he also can move um, from the standpoint of, with his fight choreography, um, both him and Mike Coulter, who of course plays Luke Cage, are very good physically in terms of being able to do enough of their stunts where once working with the, um, you know, with the stunt um, men, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty seamless with their doubles. It's like they can fight well enough that you, we, it allows us to, on camera, see them fighting, but then at the same time, because they're physical enough, the moves blend in with their doubles, so it's seamless. So a perfect example is um, that kick um, in episode four when, um, when Bushmaster on the street does that flip kick and, and, and knocks Luke down, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, lock, knocks Luke on his behind. It's like, the way it was done, you would think that it was actually Mustafa doing that flip. It was actually his double, but 
but you know, Mustafa's so good. It's just like there are just times when fighting back and forth, even in the editing room, like, whoa, who yeah, was who? It I, was excellent because there were some times that I was like, wait, is Mustafa no Capoeira? Is that what I'm seeing right now? Well, he knows enough. I mean, that's the thing that was interesting was like we wanted a different fight style, and and we very specifically um, with Bushmaster. One of the, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a huge like I, I'm one of those you know, comic book geeks that um, had the original um, Marvel Universe, like when they used to have all the dossiers of all the different, you know, criminals and, and characters in the Marvel Universe. And the one thing in terms of going back in Bushmaster's character description was the fact that he was from a, you know, a mysterious Caribbean island. And so I said, okay, this is the opportunity for us to explore Jamaica and Jamaican culture because Jamaican culture is such the cornerstone of hip hop. And as people know, like, most of this, the decisions that we make on the show are musically based, and we kind of work from the music backwards. So, I mean, ultimately, Luke Cage is a bulletproof version of Lemonade. It's just really one big concept <laughs> album, you know? And so the thing was, was that with Bushmaster, um, I wanted people to just kind of see somebody different. And because Jamaica has always been the island of, of pride, power, and resistance, um, and also has a certain mysticism to it, um, both in the music and, and in, in the culture and the people. Like, I wanted to do something where we could celebrate Jamaican culture, you know, where we can introduce Marcus Garvey, we could talk about the Maroons, um, we could talk about culture as much as we were talking about an interesting villain, um, and also have a perspective where, and this was really inadvertent, was like, Bushmaster is kind of our Eric Killmonger in that, Yes, from the hero's perspective, he is an adversary, but the more you find out about him, the more you realize, is this guy really the bad guy? Now, um, did you and Ryan have that conversation? No, th and that was what was fascinating, was like, we ended up separately, like, in terms of our creative process, coming to some of the similar conclusions with our characters. So when, when I was at the Black Panther premiere, like, you know, like, I ran into you there, and all of a sudden, like, like you know, the heart-shaped herb and all these other things. I'm like, whoa, this is so similar to, 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 to some of the stuff that we explore in our season. I was like, man, like, you know, like, it's just crazy that there's so many similarities. People would think that we actually conferred with each other, but we didn't at all, honestly. But you actually also, I heard um, a funny story about how you shared stunt doubles. Yeah. Well, the thing was, was that there, you know, up until this point, there've kind of been like a limited amount of African-American stunt people. And so what happened is it got to the point where between both productions, we were using so many of, of their people and vice versa that they kind of almost ran out of, st of black stunt people. So, it, <laughs> so it As got, you do in Hollywood. So it got, <laughs> so for example, um, you know, um, Simone Missix, um, or who plays Misty Knight, her double is, is actually Adora Milaje. So it's interesting, like how, just how much crossover um, there, there, you know, there are between the shows in, in that respect. And also, I mean, it's just a, a small black, you know, um, creative superhero community anyway. So it's like, even though, it's, it, you know, it reminds me of hip hop in the 90s. So like, you know, yes, there is a competition between Luke Cage and Black Lightning and to a certain extent, even though we're cousins, Black Panther, but we all know each other. Like, we, we all see each other. So I know the Akeels. It's like, you know, at the same time, um, I've gotten to know, you know, Ryan here and there over the years. And of course, I, I know Michael B. Jordan because of, of Creed Two and just, mm -hmm. just in general. And so it's just like, anytime you run into people, you're like, you're really happy to see them. And so, um, you know, for me, it's like, Sometimes I'll get asked the question like, you know, how do you feel about Black Lightning? And I think people want to kind of see like a rivalry or something. And for me, it's like, you know. Nah, they're just from the Brooklyn, we're from the Bronx well, or something. Well, not even that, it's, it's like, you know, like, you know, I come from an era where A Tribe Called Quest, Outkast, NWA, um, Organized Confusion, um, any number of groups were dropping records at the same time. And you could really, as a hip hop fan, like all of them as much simultaneously. It, even, and even during the height of the quote, e East versus West, I mean, everybody had all the records anyway. So, uh, you know, the thing is, is that it's really just kind of, we've never had that diversity of choice in terms of, in terms of um, content or culture on the television side. We've always had it in music. We've had it like, specifically in hip hop, particularly in the golden age. But now the fact is, it's like, you know, if you're following um, 
The Last OG or Atlanta or Luke Cage or Black Lightning or Insecure or Dear White People. Like every moment is incredible because it's all kind of part of the same cultural continuum, even though we have different approaches to how we're dealing with no, our ab culture. Absolutely. But in terms of that 90s hip hop style, though, yeah. This now, correct me if I'm wrong, it, every single title this season is a Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Yes. Um, title, right? I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and last season, it, every title was a Gangstar song. Correct. So what are we getting next season? Are we getting Tribe? Are we getting, uh, well, <laughs> we getting well, <laughs> Wu-Tang? What are we getting? Come on. A couple of things. It's like, well, A, uh, hopefully enough people watch this season in order to get Netflix to trigger that third season. So fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully on June 22nd, people, you know, actually... You know, watch Luke Cage in the morning, go see Jurassic World, and come back and, and watch more <laughs> and watch more Luke Cage. Um, at the same, but at the same time, it's just like for me, um, it always starts with the song titles and the music, and that, and I kind of structure the season not off any of the content in the titles, but sometimes the titles themselves make you think about theme, and they make you think about like, okay, what can we put Luke through, and how is how 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 is he evolving through, um, you know, each episode. Um, and then in terms of the 90s vibe, um, the thing is, is that hip hop has kind of become um, the cultural glue um, in terms of um, just visually and musically in general. Like, I, you know, I talked about the Wu-Tangification of the Marvel Universe, but, you know, at this point, everyone's getting Wu-Tangified because even on Westworld, they're, they're using casuals, everything around me. And, and it's just like, I want to be like, part of me is is like, it's cool that we show that the world is still safe if you introduce hardcore hip hop into a fictional realm.